Jacksonville. <laughs> it, it, like, it, it, it's, like it's the York Dale. Very area. upper, yeah. yeah. To a certain extent. So of course I got the sauce, you know, the uh, sauce of mercy. Um, I, I wanted to ask you when you're eating Ghanaian food, uh -huh. do you prefer uh, shito or papo shito? Like so, the, the, it's like that green chili sauce, mm -hmm. or or do you even eat Neither. any of them? Neither. Neither. Okay, jollof yeah. rice or wache? Wache. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's something about wache. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Uh, like do the you, texture consistency. W with with the fish or with the like the beef? Of course, with fish. With the fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. nice. I think the red fish they use. <laughs> um, fufu or banku? Fufu. Oh yeah. Because I haven't tried banku yet. Was your first time trying fufu when you came to Ghana? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And I got laughed at because I chewed it. Are you serious? Yeah. That's kind of similar to it. I'll tell you a funny story. In, 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 in Barbados, I had the, uh, I was at a breakfast party, or like a daytime party, and I was, I was trying some bread food, bread food, and I was like literally chewing the roasted part. Like the skin people were like laughing at me, like randomly, like, look at this foreigner. This foreigner. Yeah, you know? Um, where in the world and what is Detti December? For those that don't know. Listen. Detti December, I believe it was a, 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 a term coined by our UK friends, right. but it's just, it's just madness. There's no way to describe it. You know, okay, because I'm West Indian and, from, yes. and I'm from Trinidad, Detti December is like Trinidad Carnival, but all the parties leading up to it. It's right. just party after party after party, no sleep. Right. You know, you just pretty much have yeah. to like roll with it. There's yeah. day parties, there's night right. parties. Right, like how you'd have the paint in, yeah, in Carnival. Like, yeah, there's beach parties. Like, I'm just like just talking about like the amount of events that are happening yeah. and the way that it's jam packed. Which we've experienced. It's, yeah. it's been, it's, it's just non stop. And that's what makes it dirty because it's right. just. And then you'll have the Jamaicans that would say Dutty. Right. But, but Dutty is, a, that's kind of like, a, <laughs> I noticed there's a new kind of twang in, in, in the, in the in, in with Nigerians and Ghanaians. Oh, they, really? They're having their own kind of, so I guess that's where the Dutty comes in. <laughs> now, I first heard, of course, that you um, came here for a, um, a, a month at first, yeah. if, if I'm not mistaken, uh, you know, to work, of course, which then kind of like turned into you know, more time, a month turned into, which uh, then turned into like, you, this is home now. Yeah, I pretty much live here. Please elaborate and I tell mean, us. It wasn't anything crazy. Like 2020 was like a, a crappy year. I can swear, right? It was a shitty year. Yeah, no, a thousand year. percent. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was a shitty year for everyone. And yes. I think that year I literally only had like two gigs. Right. And, you know, if you're a DJ, and you know that December, January, February, well, December is not bad, but after New Year's Eve, everything shuts down in Toronto because it's cold, nobody wants to go out. And normally, how my like DJ cycle works is that everything shuts down January 1st, and then things don't really start picking up until March, and you're pretty much left to like live off of whatever you made in the summertime in the winter. And we all know winter is not the most pleasant time of the year. So right. around like... September, October, I started thinking about, oh, you know, we're about to get into that season. And based on the year that I had, it's like, I can't be locked up in the house. So I was just like, you know, I need to figure out what I'm going to do. Am I going to go to Trinidad? Am I going to go to whatever? I couldn't go to Trinidad because their borders were closed all year. Right. And basically, um, a friend of mine who I met, random story, but I met him on a flight going from UK to San Francisco for Afro Afrotech. I was DJing and he was doing some speaking engagements. He owns a watch company called Vitae London. Right. And basically in that in twenty twenty he had moved his whole family to Ghana. Wow. And, you know, I was just kind of like venting to him and I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Like I don't want to be in Toronto in the wintertime. And he was like And you couldn't go to Trinidad. And I so. couldn't go to Trinidad because that would have been like the safest and easiest option. Right. He was like, Come to Ghana. I just you know, he's like, Come live with us. We have a ten bedroom home in Tema, this, that and the other. So I was like, wow. Are you sure? And he was like, Yeah, come, come and I was like, Okay. So I booked my and flight. Tema's nice. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, like. and I booked my flight and basically came and you know I just asked was like can I stay for two months because I wanted to stay, I didn't want to come back like, in the winter time I tried to see uh, if I could like skip winter for as long as possible they're like yeah just come stay whatever, 
came in November and basically experienced Ghana and what is known as Deti December. Right, November and of 2020 to be exact. Yes, November of 2020 and then December of 2020. And then somewhere in December, British Airways emailed me and said that my flight was canceled coming wow. back home. Wow, okay, okay, so this is what it gets to. Yeah, so yeah. I just kind of looked at it as a sign. Right. And the thing about living here is like, the ancestors guide you. I know this sounds like really crazy and deep, but it's like, I feel like Facts and things beyond. just happen here and right. they happen for a reason. Like, yes. you know, and you know, it speaks to just kind of like our African upbringing and our Caribbean upbringing where, you know, you hear aunties say things like, oh, my spirit doesn't take this person. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. My spirit told me not to go here today. You see, yes. I went, I didn't go and the place shut down. So and much this, similarities. And the other. So I feel like that's what happens here. So it's just so like. You're, you're home again, almost. Yeah, I just like, honestly, just, and just being here, I kept saying to like, you know, Will and Claudia, um, I was just like, this feels like the West Indies. This feels like the West Indies. Like it Literally. just, it was really familiar. Just the way the houses are built, the way the roads are, like the way people move here. Yes. Like everybody's just very chill and relaxed yes. and everybody moves on their own time. So it really just felt like the West Indies and it wasn't, any, it wasn't much of a culture shock. I think it was a culture shock because obviously you're in Africa, mm -hmm. but at mm -hmm. the same time, it just felt so familiar. And it's the connection, like just understanding like, okay, well this just makes sense because a lot of Ghanians were taken. I was just going to say that. Yes, this part of the land right. to the West Indies. So right. it's just very. It just makes sense that right. everything just seems so synergetic and similar. Right. So yeah. So it just there was a comfortability mm -hmm. being here. I didn't feel like oh I need to rush back home or anything like that. So when my flight got canceled, I was like you know what, I'm gonna just stay. And then I would just call my mom once a week to find out what was happening back home, back home and she's like we're still on lockdown we're still on you're lockdown. like i ain't you're not missing nothing yeah so yeah, you know it point. just got to the point where you know april came and i was still here and i was like well i might as well just get an apartment it makes no sense to be spending that's like literally half the year and yeah all this money wow. like just kind of like living here and there in osu and how were you supporting yourself at this time was it just you i was working teaching? remotely so i was doing right. a lot of remote work um and you know, whatever events you could do here yeah at the same time. yeah i mean at that time i really wasn't djing here okay but i was really just working for the watch company i was working for vitae and that was right. kind of that was what was keeping me afloat here yes um yeah and basically i just kind of like you know i'm just gonna get an apartment and stay and i've been here <laughs> wow yeah. wow no my hat's yeah. off to you hats off to you thank you now for those that don't know but i mean in, in toronto canada you do I, I got the biggest dj with me in toronto hands oh down God. and i don't know any other females that have been holding down the crown <laughs> since <laughs> there's a lot but now. i mean yeah yeah there's a few and shouts to them but i mean from what i know and coming through my times you know I mean, i'm getting old now but i mean i'm not gonna speak on our accolades because i think they speak for themselves you know, like I said, if you don't know, you, you know now, DJ Lissa Monet. Uh, pleasure to have you live from Accra, Ghana. We are here in Osu. <laughs> I mean, give a round of applause. That, no, it, it, it's, ama it's amazing. Uh, you're tuned in, of course. I think this is episode 30-something-odd at Sauce of Mercy. Of course, make sure you guys like, subscribe, comment, all of that good stuff. Follow Lissa as well. I'm sure you will we'll get her handles in there. But, I mean, it, it's, it's amazing. Let, let me just get back into it. Okay, where's your birthplace? My birthplace is Toronto, Canada. Right. Uh, yeah. Sorry, and then your your background. My so background, you're, you're my parents, my mom is ethnicity. from Trinidad and Tobago. Right. And my dad is from Grenada. Right. And yeah. then you literally answered all the questions I was going to say about the similarities. So <laughs> it, it, it's it's crazy to see. So now going back into a bit of like the Afrobeats and like I said, Dutchy December and whatnot, um, you, we obviously notice how how big the culture is, you know yeah. what I mean, worldwide. And, mm -hmm. and so being here, you're, you're, you're able to embrace that more. Yeah. Um, do you have any, like, f uh, favorite uh, current female artists right now? I mean, there's, like, Thames. Oh, Thames for sure. Yeah. Tiwa Savage. Tiwa Savage um, is big. Yaki. Yeah. Right. Um, did I pronounce that right? Okay, Yaki, good. is it? Yeah. Those, yeah, those three are the ones that stand out right, right now. Right, yes. Mm -hmm. You know, as I briefly stated before everyone has this preconceived notion that like you know africa is like oh my god it's it's mm -hmm. darker than what it seems right or, or it's, and as, it's not as like progressive right yeah and then especially now with what else is going on in the world 
and the numbers and whatnot, mm -hmm. people are even more frightened because this is a place that's highly populated. For of sure. course, like in Nigeria, but then coming here for me, it's just like it, it's 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 not what you what, what what you know what I mean. People are making it out to be for sure. You know what I mean, totally. and, and it's like, like they got nice beaches too. They got like yeah. Uh, I can't lie. I did my research. Right. You know, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. Um, I went on YouTube and yes. you know watched all the YouTube videos and there were a few influencers who did like house tours of like where they lived here and stuff like that and I was like oh this is like they live in you know right what I right mean? right so they like, live in live in yeah and yeah. then at the time in 2020 like the numbers were super low because mm -hmm. even my mom obviously when I told her I was gonna come she was just like oh like you sure you want to like go all the way over there with COVID? And I'm like, honestly, like Ghana right now, I, well, at that time, Ghana had like 300 deaths, I think, right? So for me, that was like compared to Toronto, it was like, like, it was nothing. Com like nothing at all. Yeah. So for me, I felt, it felt safe to me. And then right. obviously I had friends here who were basically like, you know, COVID is non-existent. So just come and enjoy yourself. So come and come and have some enjoyment. Exactly. As they would say, you know, <laughs> what are the three things that made you say I'm here mm -hmm. and I, I'm this is home and I'm here to stay? <laughs> the first three things. The first three things. Yeah. Um, I think the first thing was getting the apartment. That for me was like, OK, I'm here because yeah. obviously I don't know if people know in order to get an apartment here, you have to pay for your rent up front for a full year. OK, like see, I, I had no clue of that. Yeah. So that's a huge commitment. Or six months minimum. Minimum, yeah. Right. And that's a huge commitment. So mm -hmm. to me, when I paid my rent for the whole year, it yeah. was like, OK, I'm here. I can't go nowhere. Like, right, yeah. You know, I might as well enjoy. Yeah. And then I think the other thing is just, just, just learning how to navigate Accra and learning how to navigate Ghana and learning how to deal with the Uber drivers. And yes, yes, to, so we're going to get into that. Yeah. And just being like, and just immersing myself in the day to day life. I think that's when I realized, oh, I'm here. Yes. And then I think the third thing, I can't really think of a third thing. For me, it's just every day, there are times where I'll just stop and I'll look up and I'll be like, I'm in Africa. Like, this is crazy. Right. Yeah. So there's still a sense of, I can't believe this is happening because I've lived in Toronto my whole life. Yes. You know, born there, raised there, went to school. But you traveled outside of Toronto. I've traveled before. outside okay. of Toronto, but never thought about living. I mean, the only other place I thought about living was New York City. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe Atlanta, mm -hmm. maybe LA, but like never thought about leaving a whole continent, you know, and leaving my family behind and, and stuff like that. But, you know, sometimes you just have to like, you just have to go where the wind takes you. Right, yeah. And really as you said, the ancestors it. are guiding us, Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Your three dislikes. My three dislikes about Ghana. Um, I bet I know the first one off the rip. <laughs> or I have a feeling it's going to be in there. The Uber drivers? It, it, it had something to do with this. Yeah, exactly. I was gonna, the, the traffic, the drivers. Yeah, the tra I mean, <laughs> it's crazy because everybody complains about the traffic. Or a lot of my friends back home were like, oh, you know, the traffic, the traffic. But... The first year I was here, the traffic wasn't that bad. Right. And I think it's just because there wasn't a lot of people here. But I see it now that, right. like, everybody's back in, mm. like, 2020, 2021. So, yeah, I get that. But, like, the Uber drivers are, like, they're insane. They're, like, a different breed of Uber driver. Like, we're yeah. just so used to, like, you know, punching in our location, getting in the vehicle, right, yeah. getting to our destination and hopping out. Like yeah. it's a, I feel like it's a whole like 10 step process right. to take an Uber here. But you know what too? It's also like, as you probably are familiar with the islands where it's not like the addresses are not like in Toronto right. where you're going to like uh, 12 Fort York Street. Like you're going to be at the ringway. You still, go to the, you know. still Google Maps, right? There, there so is it's Google like Maps. still a map to follow. It's like we kind of experienced that earlier too, right? Yeah, so, exactly. <laughs> and I know, I know it's very tough because there's like next to n none, like, but none dislikes. But are there any more? Um, uh, I mean. It's okay. There doesn't have to be three. Can I give you one of mine though? Sure, please. So, like, when, when being in vehicles and, like, going out with Chale and whatnot and mm -hmm. his cousins, you, you got, I call them, like, the, what do I call them, the, 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 the traffic or the, uh, the, 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 the parking enforcement the parking in some sense. They're, 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 they're directing you, come, you know, they're, they're directing One you. Thing, and then they want cities, dude. Like, One thing about <laughs> these guys is they love 
to direct traffic. Like a man they could like have a backup camera, and I, it. I, you could see that you're going back, and he's still telling you, "Wait, wait, stop, stop." But I, I can see this already <laughs> clearly. You know what I mean? They just love that aspect of their job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> but I mean, see, it, it's 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 hard to hard to have any dislikes here. Yeah, I mean, there's little things. There's little like idiosyncrasies that I think if you weren't for, I think for me, my saving grace is being Caribbean. Right. Because there's just so many similarities as right. far as like attitude and mentality and you know just vibe and all that stuff so for me it's like what i used to like get really riled up about i don't anymore because it's like it's just like being in the west indies right, right. you know there's like just little things and the thing is the other thing i had to understand and humble myself too is like I'm not in Canada anymore. Yes. I'm no longer in North America. Yes. I'm in somebody else's country. This is the way things go here. Mm -hmm. So I have to just deal with it. Yeah. I mean, I can complain all I want. Of course. But this is how it is. Yes. You know, it's like, yeah. it's like, it's like me going into your house and saying, I don't like where your couch is, mm -hmm. or I don't like the way you set up your mm -hmm. television. Mm -hmm. It's like, I have no right to do that. I'm a visitor, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like, this is the way things are here. Mind right. you, you the adapt. locals can talk about how crappy things are and right. how they want things to change because they live here, they right. live it, you know what I mean? Yes. For me, it's like, I'm still a visitor in someone's home. So I have, I literally have no right to call anybody anything or, you know, complain about anything. I'm Facts. just happy to be here. Facts. Yeah. yeah. One quick minute. Okay, so now, now being home, have mm -hmm. you, Accra's home? Right. For you, have you been outside? So, I mean, like, you know, a few of the tourist, I would say, attractions like Aqua Safari or anywhere. I'm horrible. Yeah. I'm such a, like... Tema. I mean, yeah, I've been yeah. to Tema, I've been to Pram Pram, mm -hmm. and I just went to Aquasambo not too long ago. Yeah. And right? I think you said Cape Coast, not yet. Cape Coast, not yet, but okay. that's, like, the plan this week, hopefully. But, wow, like, yeah, in the yeah. year that I was here, I really just tried to, like, get to know Accra and, like, mm. get to know, like, where everything is and all the areas yeah. and stuff like that. So, like, now when... Like, even when my Ghanaian friends came this year, and I was trying, and they were, like, we were talking about, like, places and stuff, and I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, it's just around the, like, the Coca-Cola, like, roundabout, and da-da-da, and they're like, you know places better, <laughs> better than, than I, I do. do, yeah, it's yeah. just like, well, that's the thing, it's like, for me, it's like, I just want to, I want to know where I'm going, yeah. and I want to, like, learn where I'm at, right. I don't want to just always have to rely on somebody to, it's like, true, drive true. me somewhere, or, right. you know, like, guide me. Uh, the annoying Uber drivers. To right, be. Yeah, exactly, because yeah. yeah. at first it was like, you know, they would mm -hmm. ask me because, you know, they ask you where you're going and it's like I had no idea. So for me, I was like, okay, if that's going to be a reoccurring thing then I need to learn where I'm going because yes. when they ask me where I'm going and I tell them I don't know, I'm relying on you because you're the Uber driver. Right, 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 right. It's like that for me, it's like, okay, well, that just gives off foreigner vibes. Yeah. So it's like, let me just yeah. get to know this place so that way when they're going somewhere and I know where they're going and they might be going in the wrong way or in the wrong direction, I can Now like, you can be like, yeah, okay, no. Like, it's by the shop right or where yeah, you, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or I can give them a landmark or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I had the opportunity to, to, uh, to visit Abri. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah, beautiful I went to Abri too yeah, at beautiful. night though. Really gorgeous. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful, beautiful. It's like, Abri is like, hmm. Abri is like, I want yeah, what to say. What would you compare it to? I don't think it's there's like, anything in, in Toronto we can compare no, it to. No, but like in proximity to Accra, it's kind of like Stouffville. Oh, right. Yes, yes. Yeah. In, in distance. It's very scenic. That makes sense. Like yeah. there's a lot of like scenery and nature. The yeah. air is a little bit cleaner out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it is. It is. It is. <laughs> yeah. Like not Accra as, is like, oh, it's, it's New York. It's Toronto. It's downtown Toronto. Yes. It's Miami. You got here. You got the yeah. airport, you know. Yeah. Like I think this is one of the cities in the world where the airport's like right smack dab in the middle of the city. The, of the city, yeah. Yeah, like you can get from wherever, like if you live in Accra, you can get to the airport in like 15 minutes. Tops. Easily, yeah, easily. it's easily. crazy. You know what East Lagan reminds me of? Um, Yorkville. <laughs> like it, it, it's like it's the Yorkdale very area. upper yes, yeah it's very yeah, yeah. upwardly no like, Yorkville Yorkville like okay, downtown okay. like you know by the yes, yeah to a certain extent it has that or yeah you, you know what you could actually say that too like Avenue Road Avenue Road <laughs> yeah like yeah Forest Hillish area yes yes I feel like East Lagon has like the most Range Rovers per capita yeah the most Range Rovers <laughs> like, it's hands down yeah hands down <laughs> uh, he, it was funny he was saying that too Nee was saying that they, that it, there's just like 
it, well, he was saying that about here, period. Right. When you go to East Lagoon, because it's more like, obviously, yeah. scale, you'll see them like for days. Yeah. To get back a bit into the food, mm -hmm. sorry to cut you, um, jerk or jollof, jerk chicken or jollof rice. This has been a topic trending in Toronto. Oh, so wow. I want to ask you about it. Marlon, as uh, you know, he's been, and, and Femi, Femi Lawson have been talking about this and it's turned into something. I feel that, like, honestly, you, can you can't really compare the two. The but uh, see, that's the thing, right? You know? You can combine the two, you know. Both yeah. can be right. Right. Because I guess jollof is, is, is still, like, a main dish. It's food. It's, sure. That's rice true. It's seasoned. very filling. Yeah, it's very right. filling. Um... I don't know. I'm West Indian. I like, I like chicken with my rice. So right, I right. Both. Yeah, it, it's, I, I said the same thing. You can't have one without the other. I, exactly. I can't compare the two. Um, to speak on that, uh, you there was a uh, big event that you were part of, Jerk mm -hmm. Jalaf, yes. right? Elaborate on that. Tell me about that and your contributions. Oh my goodness. Um, shout out Asante. Uh, Jerk and Jalaf is a party that I think originated in Detroit. Um, you know, I I did their New Year's Eve party like years back in Detroit, and we've just always like oh, wow. yeah maintained like a really good friendship and relationship. And you know, when he hit me up, he was like, you know, we're doing one in Ghana, and I'm like, well, I'm here. So he was wow. like, well, yeah, you're on it, hands wow. down, no problem. Wow. Yeah, and that's just kind of how that came about. And they did they did that party in conjunction with Culture Creations, the guys mm -hmm. who created Afrochella. Right, right, right. And um, yeah, like it's just been, I, I think it's just been really amazing to see people who started brands and who have started parties in the States or in Canada, bringing them here to Ghana. Yes. Um, you know, I think last night was Afro Beats and Brunch, which is another um, mm -hmm. U.S., I think another U.S.-based mm -hmm. branded party. Right. You know, Jerk and Jollof was here. And even Every Stylish Girl, mm -hmm. which is like a huge blog brand. Oh, it's Instagram. called Every Stylish Girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. They did a brunch that I DJ'd. Um, oh, wow. The same day as Jerk and Jala. Yeah. Now, so, is that yeah. like a touring stylist brand, or is it just here based in... No, uh, she's based in the States, but she's okay. Ghanaian. Okay, okay, I makes think. sense. I think. Yeah. yeah, I think she's Ghanaian. Yes. So, yeah, so she just basically brought the brand and did an event here at Kozo. Yes. So, I thought that was... I think it's really cool that, you know, people Kozo's are like starting a nice to... Spot. Yeah, yeah, it's a gorgeous spot. Yeah. I, I think it's really cool that people are just bringing their brands and injecting that into the culture here. Right, right. Uh, you mentioned Avercello, which is dead on smack, what I wanted to get into. <laughs> Speak on that, your busy itinerary schedule. Because oh, I know man. we were talking, and I, I knew, I knew, though. I knew prior to coming here, I'm like, she's busy. Like, how many parties would you say you played off the top? Like, um, you had, like, you were, like, every other day. Compared to, like, some of the other DJs, my part, the parties that I did was light work. Like, I know DJs who work every night, you know right. what I mean? Right. Um, but I... I think maybe five or six, right. seven. And were you, did you play last year too? I, I only did one event last year. Right. Just simply because I just didn't want to... Mm -hmm. Long story short, I was like on the verge of like retiring. So I was like, you know what, I'm in a new country. I that phase don't want to like, you know... So I just kind of like took it easy on like the gigs and stuff like that. Right. But this year, I don't know, I guess I had a second wind or something. Mm -hmm. And I just decided to like, and I, and I had so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, you know, we had the, we were graced to, to, to be there. And uh, when WizKid came out, it was crazy. Oh my crazy, gosh. Crazy. I couldn't That was like the buildup. It, it was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw you there too. I felt like it was like a boxing match where it's like you have the, the amateurs who were warming up mm -hmm. for the, for then the main event. Right. And he he just crushed it. He held yeah, it down. Yeah, I heard he killed it. But yeah, like yeah. Afrochella, I think is like such an amazing concept and event that helps keep the culture alive and helps keep people rooted in their culture. Yes. You know, that like Carabana for us. Yeah. Or what it was supposed to be at the time before Scotia Bank just it, took everything exactly, over. Exactly, exactly. Right. Like it's you know, it's it's compiled by Africans and you know and and they understand firsthand like the importance of like you know, people who are coming from outside to yes. like really engage with the culture and not to have it misconstrued by what they've been taught back home you know right. what i mean so i'm i'm you know those guys do like an amazing job and right. i was saying earlier i was like the the amount of effort and like money they put into event production here in ghana alone for events is like phenomenal in, insane like right. that doesn't happen in toronto and for me it's like toronto is like such a metropolitan city with like brands and you know We've got all the major brands basically there. And then we have the states, like just yes. like 
a hop, skip, and a jump, and a hop and skip, uh, a hop, skip, and yes. a jump away, and it's like we can't even get that where we're like where we live, and it's like you go to these parties and they've got like stages built out and lights and like you know major liquor sponsors. I, I was and, just like, gonna say the same thing. Even the clubs, know, yeah, the infrastructure alone, like even like. You know, you go to Sandbox or even to the Polo Beach right. Club. Right, like they'll like, uh, and Sandbox is it, a huge setup club. Is, sandbox right. is like, for people who don't know, Sandbox is like um, Rebel in Toronto, right? Right, right. You it's got the huge. pool, they got the pool. And it's right by the yeah. water. and it's right by the water. <laughs> but you got the pop cheese. And it's totally like, different. they'll do like a Moroccan theme night and they'll just like, they'll outfit the whole venue and make it look like a Moroccan like market and have yeah. all of their bottle service girls dressed in like Moroccan, right. like traditional, like yes, Moroccan. Yes, yes, I noticed that. You know yes, what I mean? Yeah. And it's like they go all out. It's like yeah. we do a Moroccan me of a theme Ziba. party in Toronto yeah. and we just have Moroccan lights or some shit. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's just, yeah. like the, it's and, it, and, it, and, it, and it has nothing to do with the event producers in Toronto. I think it has everything to do with- The funding? The funding and the fact that the brands don't feel confident injecting money into, you know, events and brands to make it what it is and like i was saying before it's like we have the internet now so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we can see what other countries and what other cities are doing and it's like yes. you know we're sitting in toronto and we're like well why can't we have that yes. why can't we do you know we've got just as cool people and creatives to like make events pop like why can't why are you guys only just giving us free bottles like why can't you write us a check like why right. can't you right you know give us enough money us. to like bring artists and you know what i mean yes so it's like yeah. and my thing is the point i'm trying to make is if they can do that here in ghana like i don't see why it can't be done, done in, in toronto an, with or an economy anywhere. like ours yeah, exactly right yeah we're i mean well the spending power here is right it's next level yeah. people spend because so. i mean we even the, we've had you see we had the like club district we're not in the scotia bank theater mm -hmm. they've, they've put some money into it but then things are going and coming and now with again covid right so it, it's tough but i feel like with here it, with, with with that that whole situation the covid situation it's not as harsh where it's, we are so it, it's, it's not but at the same now time now it's affecting what yeah more. but at the same time it's like before covid like what was the excuse right you know it's true it's true it's true yeah but yeah, that's one of the things I noticed here. It's that like event production is like they don't they don't play. They don't around. play at all. Yeah, it's, it's they want to make sure that it's beyond the part. Yeah, the experience is the experience. It's like because as well, just like Toronto, there's not a lot of venues here. Mm -hmm. There's very few venues. You know, there's probably like five or six, seven, maybe eight like main venues, main venues right, right. in Accra. So it's like you have to like and you're using those venues on a consi consistent basis so you want to make sure that when people walk into that venue it's not the same venue right it looks like a different venue each time each yeah. time yeah and i think yeah. that's what they that's what they try to achieve and they do achieve that here Wh where was the venue that Africella was at and does it change each year it was at Elwax stadium right because i knew it was a stadium yeah, yeah i don't it. know if it changes i'm going mm -hmm. to assume it's at the same place every mm -hmm. year because it's the only place that can hold that large amount of people right. but i mean it could be a, it could be at a different place every yeah. year i don't know that was my first year going actually i didn't go last year that was for 2020 20 yeah 2020 that, that yeah. must have been crazy yeah. in 2019 though because it was the year of return yeah i wasn't here for that wow yeah yeah yeah, yeah. One thing that I've noticed, even even just being there, being here in Ghana, even uh, the other day, Charlie and I uh, went to Wakunda Beach. Mm -hmm. Everywhere, not just even the parties, just the colors. Like you, you see what he's wearing, just the, the colors, the vibrancy, mm -hmm. the fashion. They, they, you know, you guys put yourself together very well, naturally. Listen, I, I was, Africans can yeah. dress, eh? It, crazy, it's crazy. <laughs> even I went to the uh, Charlie was there. We were all, we were all there. Uh, Christy Fada, we were, we were at the, 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 uh, the market, sorry, the art center, mm -hmm. forgive me. And this actually happened twice here. And I'll go back to the first time after, but we were, we were looking for a fit and we just found it right there in the art center. Right. And, and put it, you know, right on the traditional and it, it just came together really well mm -hmm. for one of the interviews that we're doing. The first time it happened, I, um, I had a pair of Clarks so everybody back home was like, yo, like one, two people, they're like, yo, I don't know how you're going to pull those off. Thank That's an old man shoe. That's an <laughs> old Jamaican man shoe. How the hell are you going to pull off these Clarks? Here in Ghana. At, here in Ghana. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I'm just going to bring. Especially with the suede and the dust. But and the actually, I, why I, I, now that I remember I brought them originally was because we went to a wedding. 
um, his cousin Owen oh, okay. got married. Congrats to him. <laughs> the, now the Ankaras. And uh, we, so we had the traditional wedding. And then we had your formal, you know, okay, North yes. American mm -hmm. style wedding. So the traditional w wedding, I had my custom traditional maid. And the, Car the Clarks were like a turmeric orange kind of. Okay. Not as bright as this. So I had the, you know, the, the stripe coming down here. A little, like, it was like a pin, kind of. Very nice. All white with a hint of orange. Okay. That went together well. But then when we went out, I think it was on New Year's, and we were in the, the art center uh, again, I found a nice, like, like a button-up, like the Pablo style, like that, that, <laughs> that, you know, that real vacay breeze. And it just, <laughs> mad, and I was telling this guy, I'm like, again, the ancestors, I'm like, look, look how well right? this, this, this fit came come together. together. It, it comes together, but no, the fashion is on par like we said, there's a lot of people out here that are, uh, even in Toronto, that are, are fashion influencers, Fumi. And I mean, it's just, you know, the colors, the vibrancy, and then the people behind it that are wearing it, the melanin. Yeah, It's, it's just exactly. amazing. And you're very well dressed today yourself, by the oh, way. Thank you. I mean, well, you always are, but you know, I have to compliment the fit. <laughs> um, I feel like, honestly, um, one more thing, actually, before I get to that. Your favorite eateries in Ghana. Oh. I have a few, but I, I'll let you go first. And And where you would advise somebody that's you know somebody to 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 go that's that's coming well, here for the first time if first things like first you got to try these places buka oh, wow. um amazing ghanian food we went N you went the moment we came off the moment he we, we came to the airport was it the same day or the day after i'm like fam i'm hungry bro uh, sorry the toronto talk i i'm ethiopian <laughs> airlines sister I'm like, bro, this food is like, so 14, no, 16 hours to be exact. 11 to Ethiopia, and then five hours here or so. Oh, and so you went across to come back. Yeah, and, and I'm like, I just need, I like, he, he knows me like the, the, the back of my hand. So he read my mind, and the moment we touched, that I think by like the evening, we went there and it was phenomenal. Just yeah. from when I was walking in, you know, you wash your hands really outside, the, the setup, the art, and then the food was, a, I, we had this here. Right? This app? Yes. But, uh, hey, Soro. And I was want to ask you about that too. <laughs> like, I, I said the same thing to him. I'm like, is this not Soro? But they call it Bisap. Bisap. Yeah. Bisap, right. Mm -hmm. So Buka is. Or Sobolo. Is same it Sobolo? thing, right? Yeah. 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 Right. With the ginger in there. Mm -hmm. So Buka and then any other places? Buka. Another good place for local food is Living Room in East Lagon. You have never been? Um, and then, like, there's Kozo, which is right. really good. For, it's like an Asian fusion restaurant. Right. Bondi is really good. Bondi is really nice. Fat it's set fish up. is really good I, for so you, Yeah, you, you took mine right out, of the, right, out of the, <laughs> right out of the hat. Very nice. And Fat then they have that really rooftop there, too. Yeah. And the then I've had, oh, and Sentoku for sushi. Oh, wow. And Rockefeller's is really good for sushi, too. Wow. Yeah, I eat out a lot. Yeah. I don't cook. And you'll, so. see, and you'll see all of the different <laughs> cultures. I mean, you can get Indian food out here. Yeah, you can get, you get Indian Chinese food. food. You could get some nice Italian pizza. Yep. You could get yeah, down there, whatever. And, um, yeah. Oh my God, what's that place called? Pinocchio, I think. Right. They have really good gelato. But, like, but they have like a pizza spot too. Yeah. And that's where? Sorry? It's like, oh, I can't remember the name of it right now. Yeah. But yeah. It's in East Lagoon? It's in, it, yeah, it's in East Lagoon, yeah. Right. Yeah, and Osu. I just can't remember the name of the pizza spot, but I think the gelato spot is right. Pinocchio. Now, where would you go to get your watch here? On the roadside. Yeah. Oh, for real? Yeah. Yeah. Because we went to, we went to, was it Rock and Watch? I think it was called. Uh, but, it, but you would say the roadside, yeah, the there's none time, other. Yeah, you got to get that. Yeah, the only time I've had Watche was on the roadside. Right. Yeah. The I don't real think way. I've ever gone into a restaurant and for asked real. for Watche. Yeah. What about the kebabs? You eat kebab? It's very big out here. Do I? No. You're not a kebab mm -mm, person. Yeah. No. <laughs> What's your favorite type of fish? Tilapia. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the grouper. Grouper's nice too. I'm a pescatarian, so. Okay. I'm, I'm biased. I'm I always, a so I always, <laughs> so I, I always like to know. Um, honestly, I feel like, I feel like, being here, there's no such thing as homesick. No. I've been to many places. Well, you know, a, a few that I've, I've been to, and I've been homesick. Yeah, like you can't wait to. And go And this back is the home. longest out of all of the places that I've stayed. Okay. And and one thing I know we we tapped on a little bit uh, the hospitality. Like I feel like back home, there's people that will like that will like you know stress over the small things but here they're grateful for the small things right 
like you know growing up my mom used to have a book like i never read it was like don't sweat the small stuff, stuff. Mm -hmm. and i found it somewhere in the, in the boxes the other day and it, 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 it the same type of thing that you spoke about like how our parents would you know you'll have those terms and they'll speak on certain mm -hmm. things that that they've like you know encountered growing up and yeah you, you just like people here are very i mean um just just grateful appreciative yeah, lending helping welcoming. hands welcoming yep. one day we saw somebody uh, like I, I think it was one of the uber drivers uh, sorry uber drivers uh, had a flat and there's a bunch of guys just coming up to, to, help, to help him like people will stop over you know what i mean so yeah. it, it's just like the happiness and and yeah the i vibrancy. feel like people here you know they always have the best intentions it's never like one thing too as well that i tell all my friends back home ghana is safe yeah. like it's not very safe yeah like mind you i don't watch the news or anything it's probably a bad thing but yeah. like based on my experience gone is safe like i can walk the streets at 2 a.m yeah. and not be bothered right or not opposed be, to what you hear about nigeria and or other. even jamaica or <laughs> right trinidad, trinidad. You know right. What I mean? right so it's like you know it's, it's very safe in that sense it's like you know you go out and there's no harassment from men it's just yeah. you go out you have a good time you go home you know what i mean like Right. It's very, very safe here. Right, yeah. Like, yeah. I, like legit hands down, wish there was a cancel my flight. So yeah, where do you, okay, where do you see Ghana and the future of Ghana in the next five years? And you see, obviously, a lot of people are coming to invest and right. you know, Chinese people, Asians, like there's a lot Albanese. of business o owners here. Yeah. Like, like <laughs> what, what do you feel about it? I mean, the economy's um, stepping up. Well, yeah, I mean, Ghana, like the one thing I, I, I say to a lot of my friends, it's like, it's really progressive. There's a lot of things happening, a lot of moving parts. I've met people who work in so many different industries. I work, you know, in Toronto, I was in the music industry. So you were only around people who were creatives and in the music industry. And here it's like, I've met people in tech. I've met people, you know, who are obviously entrepreneurs, people who work in politics, mm -hmm. people like, they're just, a lot of people in different industries just kind of like moving around each other. Mm -hmm. Nobody's really segregated. Everybody just kind of like, you know, intersects, if that makes any right, sense. Right, right, right. And, you know, I feel like if we stay the course, I say we, because I live here now. Yeah. Um, if we stay yeah, the yeah. course and yeah. like remember who we are as a people, like, you know, I'm I'm all for big business, but I think for me, I think what's a little bit irritating, and somebody asked me this question too, like, what are some of the things that you dislike about Ghana? Yes. I think one of the things that I dislike about Ghana the most is that the big box stores are not owned by black people. They're not owned by Africans, you know what I mean? Right, like, right, right. Palace, and I don't know if ShopRite is owned by, an Af like, Africans or black people, but, like, these big supermarkets are owned by people who are not African and it's like this is where everything originated like we should we should understand that like everything that the world needs we have like I think Ghana is like the biggest the producer tip of, our hands. of like like coca like um you know the coca plant yes and it's just like the rest of the world eats chocolate you know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? yeah yeah Belgium and yeah, you know, yeah. like, and they have to come to us to buy that in order for them to produce. And it's like, you know, and we're asking them, like, what's your budget? Like, no, we name our price. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, I think we need to realize that, like, we're worth more than the rest of the world says yes. we're not. Yes. If that makes any sense. Absolutely. And yeah. like, and you, and it's crazy because you see it here. You see it every day. And I see it in the nightlife. And I see, you know, there are a lot of people here who want to preserve the culture and want to, you know, keep Africa African, but for some reason we just allow others to come in and just capitalize right, on that. Right, right. And it's like, there's nothing wrong with that. People can come in and capitalize, but they have to come in on our, on, on Ghana's terms, right? Yes. Yeah, like there has yeah. to be ground rules. Like you guys yeah. have to pay, either pay a premium or, right, you right. know what I mean? Like right, you can't right. just come here and live but off the land. To access this and, land and, yeah. and of course, of course. So of that's course. just kind of, and you know, and I feel like just being, you know, someone whose ancestors were taken from here and brought to the Caribbean and then our parents having to leave the Caribbean and come to Canada right. to make a better life for ourselves. Yes. I'm like a product of that. So it's like, I've gotten to like learn the history and then be a product of, 
you know, our parents leaving their home yes. to come somewhere else to like make a better life for their kids. Right. So it's like now I have the freedom to like crazy circle back yes. and come back here and just live, yes. you know, how I want. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And, and in doing that, just seeing like the possibilities and like the potential and like, you know, I just think Ghanaians need to realize like their power mm -hmm. and their influence on the world right. you know yeah. and not give in to what north america says that we they are right. like yeah y'all know what you have yes like, yes you guys should be like Don't charging yeah charging like a premium on that right it's crazy but and, that's and, my and little rant for the day even you saying <laughs> things it's true though that no no like, <laughs> you know i take my hat off to you for that because like and even with what you were saying about things coming back into full circle with our parents like growing up, um, you know, it's like a, a lot of our parents, even in the West Indies and whatnot, they, they come back, like say, like for like, for like do what you did, like six months of the year. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, when it's cold, they're not there at all. Right, and I, exactly. I always wondered why growing up, but now you see why. Even well, yeah. for health, you well, know what I mean? Like reasons, reasons yeah. too. And even like people this are the age, real like D3. first generation mm -hmm. who are age, I find us saying a lot like, we weren't built to live here. Like, mm. like when I say here, I mean like Canada, Canada. right? Yeah. Like we weren't built to live there. Yes. You know, it's like every year we, you know, we experience the same winter. We get depressed. We mm. get agy. Sicker. We get all that sick. That's yeah. why we need to buy vitamin D3 exactly. when you have it really here. And like you know one I mean? of the things yeah. that I really like, you know, give kudos to my mom is like she would like send us, well not send us, but she would take us back to Trinidad every year mm -hmm. for a week in January. Mm -hmm. And I was always grateful for that because, you know, it was just an opportunity for us to like obviously go back and see family. Now would you say with that being said, Ghana's in your five year projections, your five year plan? Is this like, well, yeah, what is it for you from here? Listen, after the pandemic, yes. there's no plan. Right. There's like, honestly. After the pandemic, there's no plan. There's no yeah. plan after, the, after what 2020 did to the world. Like, yes. I have no plans for anything. Yes. Honestly, like I'm yes. just gonna let things happen right to be completely honest and i know that sounds like a very lazy answer right. but that's just like really where my head is at like right. i couldn't even tell you what i'm going to do next month yes you know what i mean like it's yes. just one of those things where it's like i can't plan for anything like i know i have a flight back to toronto but like the way things are happening there it's like i don't even you know, know if that's you're gonna, gonna happen right, right. you know what i mean yeah. so it's like i just kind of have to take it one day at a time you know like the th all the things that our aunties used to tell us, our yes. grannies used yes. to tell us, just take it one day at a time, sweet yes. Jesus. Like, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Just, that's just me right yeah, now. Yeah. Like, you you I can't really, cross a, a chasm yeah, in one jump. You, it's right. crazy. Like, yeah. um, you know, and I think that was, I think that was like the whole, I don't, I shouldn't say that was the whole sole purpose of the pandemic, but it's one of those things that like taught me. It's like, you can't like, cause I used to be such a planner, like six months goal and eight months goal and one year goal. And now I just, all that's out the window. Right. Yeah. Even you sing auntie just reminded me, I was at one of the vendors, auntie Bridget was her name. And she was speaking on like, she's like, nowadays, you know, you have these kids, they, they want to, they, 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 they want to take the bus everywhere. They want to take the bus and, and, and school's right there. When we used to walk, walk right. they used to walk far. And, <laughs> and somebody else mentioned, you know, you see the kids here, good morning, hi, how are you? Right. And back home, it's just like, it, it's so different. The brought yep. up is different. You know what Very I mean? Different. When I say back home in Toronto home, but. Yeah. Um, and I was saying, Auntie, but I'll close it off with we were, one thing I wanted to touch base on was the woman empowerment. Mm -hmm. You see that a lot out here. Chale mentioned that in a, a, a lot of the, the main restaurants that, um, that you mentioned as well are owned by women, women yeah. right? So it, it's amazing you being here, you know what I mean? And, and you are a woman of power. Oh. So you're in the right place, you know what I mean? Thank and, you. Yeah. and I look forward to, you know what I mean? Like, you know, building more, coming back here. Um, I mean, inspired just to stay even longer and, and like I said, explore my roots, mm -hmm. get in touch. And yeah, and it's, it, it's not one quick call away. It, it's, you know what I mean? But it, it's, it's definitely, it's home though. It's home. And, totally. and I'm grateful, like I said, just to be here, let alone, you know, to be accompanied by you and, and, and to, to support and know what you're doing. And, and you've literally come a long way, but oh, you know, at, you know, that. in Toronto <laughs> and here and, yeah. and. Look forward to seeing what you're going to be doing and, and where the future is going to take you me here too. in the motherland. I'm, I'm excited yeah. to find out what's yeah. going to happen for me too because I don't yeah. know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we'll be finding your husband here. Your, oh my your god. <laughs>
that's it's settling podcast. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. that's on part two. Where can we find you, uh, Lisa, um, um, on all socials? Yeah, you can find me at Hey Lisa Monet on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. Right. Yes. You've now been tuned into the sauciest podcast in the world. You know this already. You know the vibes. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, all of that great stuff. You already know. Sister, it's, it's amazing oh, having you, you know, you. I appreciate you. <laughs> from Toronto to Ghana, we're here, yes. Accra, live from Osu, beautiful place, beautiful time, and make sure you guys support, and like I said, now uh, there's a lot of you guys that didn't know, you know, things about Ghana or may plan on visiting, and you now know, and you know, you got to do your research, but it, it's definitely, I've been having the time of my life. He's not leaving. And I, I've been getting next to none, but no sleep. Chale over here last night was like, yo, we're going out. I'm like, yo, I got to be up for the, and set my alarm clock, two, three hours of sleep. I can't not (laughs) embrace this. I can't not eat the good food, get the sun. You know what I mean? Like, just like embrace the people, the children. It's so like, it's crazy. Even this guy said, you're having so much enjoyment. His mom said, I'm going to do, they're going to have to deport you because you're having (laughs) way too much fun. Like, I'm I'm going crazy. I'm doing spin around 360 dances at the weddings. They're like, who is this Toronto guy (laughs) coming in? And just like, like, people see me and they're like, hey, brother, they know I'm from, you know what I mean? So I got to put on the traditional now and and, and double because everybody's just like, yeah. It's crazy. It's amazing. And happiness is the key. You know what I mean? And that's what I think was, was the key element to my my trip here and and it, it was just it, it 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 kind of like ignited the flame in that because i'm a firm believer in like the laws of attraction mm-hmm. and you know what i mean on and 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 keeping you know what i mean that that energy alive that energy is everywhere here the vibrancy it's been yeah. amazing it's been a pleasure uh we out